Hi Ensign and welcome to my second video. Before we begin today, I would just like to thank all of you who have decided to watch my previous video and maybe even comment, like or subscribe to the channel. I hope that the audio is alright today because last time I read some comments about the audio being too quiet, so if there are any further problems please do let me know. With that out of the way, let's get into today's topic, shall we, handsome? The last time we talked about the BDO's monetization system and all its perks. And maybe you have been persuaded to give the game a try. Now, one thing about BDO that I have not told you is that it, it can be confusing to new players. But don't worry, I am here to make your life a little bit easier and make my life a bit easier as well by not explaining everything and just giving you access to third-party sites that you can use to make your journey in Black Desert Online a little bit easier. Alright, our first stop, I'm sure most of you already know, and it's Garmov.com. Garmov is so the quintessential Black Desert site, it's basically synonymous with BDO at this point, and it has a lot of uses, but most people use it for one of two things. So, if we go down to this drop-down menu, most people either use it for the gear planner, which as the name suggests is for planning your gear, you can see all your stats in this page, including rank journals and crystals, and this is a good place for people who want to theory craft, or if they want to, like, see what kind of upgrade they should be going for and it also shows you the monster zone ab caps and shows you if you can actually grind an area or if you are over capping an area etc now this is something that pearl abyss has just now like a day ago added into the game but it's still nice to have all of this in one place so it's definitely still kind of useful right same goes for the hit rate calculator which is the, basically the same, but it just uses monster evasion and how much accuracy you should have to be able to deal 100% DPS so you are not missing any attacks. So this is one side of Garmov that a lot of people use. The other side is the grind tracker, right? So there are two points. I will first show you the global grind, which is the average of all the grinds that are tracked through Garmov that have been made public. Now, if you want to use this to see how much money you are going to be making at a specific spot, then don't. Because Garmov does not actually have access to game data. It just uses whatever numbers people put in there. So, you know, it's kind of like Tinder. If a guy is 5'11", his bio is going to say that he's six foot. If a girl has gained a, a little bit of weight, she's going to put pictures from her summer vacation in bikini, even though it's now February. So, people kind of lie, you know? They put in an hour grinded, even though they went, were in Marni for 65 minutes, they are going to put only their best hours, so for example, if they, are if they die, they're not going to include that, right? So, just keep that in mind. Also, if you want to make full use of this, then you'll need to get uh, the subscription for Garmov, which is roughly 5 euro per month, and it will give you access to data from different dates. So, for example, if a spot got buffed or nerfed, you can change the data to reflect, like, after the nerf or after the buff, how much money it is, even though the, the hours grinded are probably going to be way smaller. You can also use this to change the drop rate, because all of these buffs are not going to be available in the free version. So you can only see like Yellow Scroll and Agres, and the numbers are not going to be uh, as accurate. And lastly, you won't have access to specific classes or info of specific classes. So baseline, Garmov shows unspecific class, which means it shows the average of every single class which is not that important for us, because you are usually only grinding on one class, right? You are not grinding on multiple classes at the same time, so you only want info for your class that you are grinding on. So, for example, I grind on Tamer Succession, so I want to see numbers for Tamer Succession, and you can already 
see that they are completely different than what, whatever they were before. The better idea when it comes to grinding is grinding or tracking your own hours. And you can do this through the grind, grind tracker. And basically all you need to do is just go here. You won't be able to see it because I have it a little bit cropped. There is an add button right here. You choose your spot. And if you look here, you can see that you can put literally any numbers that you want. So I can say that I made 13,000 uh, trash per hour. And I also dropped three Deborah necklaces. This just goes into my previous point with uh, the global grind and the fact that Garmo has no way to track this because it can't actually see into the game data. It just trusts you to put your honest numbers, which is why tracking your own grinds and just comparing with yourself is the best idea because you are going to be constant, right? There is no reason why you should be lying to yourself, so just... Keep that in mind when you use Garmov, it's definitely a very useful site. But you can explore this site yourself and see what you find interesting and what you find useful. Next up we have something for you life skilling mains out there. You might also already know this, because it's another site that a lot of people use already. But in case you don't, then this is BDOlytics. And what BDOlytics does is that it compares the market price of the recipes to the prices of their ingredients. So you will know if you are making profit by making certain recipes. This works mainly for cooking alchemy and processing because those are the three life skills that you need to make something out of something else. It also has a tab for gathering, we will get to that later. We can see a lot of numbers. And what mainly concerns us is the money per hour. The more money you are making, or like the more money per hour it, it says it is, the more likely there is to be a bottleneck. This is especially visible with alchemy. So if we look at alchemy, we are going to see, oh my god, this is 50 billion per hour. But then you have to look at the recipe and you will see that in order to make this, you need an all of stones, which is relatively easy to make. You need an old tree bark which you get from lumbering, the fruit of abundance which is one sort of bottleneck, you can only get this sometimes from uh, picking up herbs with a hoe. Then you get like a powder of time which is whatever, pure powder, you can make this yourself. And then you see it needs white truffle mushroom and this is the biggest bottleneck. You can see that it's not on the central market, you just cannot get this and it's expensive as hell. And the only way to get this, you basically get a seed and you need to combine it with a truffle, a truffle mushroom. And then you make get another seed, you put that into your garden and after that you get this. So it's very rare and it's an extreme bottleneck. So yes, if you are lucky enough to be making this item for an hour, which, which by the way you probably need like 2,000 crafts of, so good luck getting 6,000 truffle white truffle mushrooms. But if you are lucky to do that, you might maybe, you know, like every month, every two months, if you do nothing but alchemy, then sure, you will be making 50 billion an hour. But most likely, you are going to be making some of these like less uh, profitable recipes, because the less profitable recipes are more consistent. So. Maybe, you know, like the metal solvent, it's already kind of bottlenecked by the rough stone because you usually cannot get this. And even the traits of savagery is not that easy to obtain. And you either get this from, I think, tanning or you get this from specific uh, mob grind spots. So you already have two bottlenecks here. And sure, this is relatively easy for the amount of money that you make. But even this you won't be able to make forever. So just keep that in mind, the higher the item is in money per hour or silver per hour, the less likely you are going to be to do this long term. So maybe you will be able to do it for a couple of hours, maybe you will be able to do it for an hour every month or so. Let's quickly look at the gathering tab as well, this is basically just Garmov but for gathering. It does not have all the spots because some spots, I guess, they just didn't want to track and there will definitely be spots that you are going to find yourself based on the current market state that will be more, more or less profitable than the spots here. And 
from what I know, not every life skiller, especially not every gatherer, is very keen on sharing their secrets because it means that there will be more supply and more supply means less money, right? So not every gatherer is going to be like very happy to share their secrets with you. Just keep that in mind. But this is a good enough baseline. You are definitely going to want to make your own research, especially your own market research, if you want to do gathering yourself long time. But this is a good starting point. Video Lytics also has another nice feature that I use a lot, and that is the map. You can use the map for multiple things. You can look up nodes and see like which nodes are where if you want to set up your worker empire. But most importantly, you use this to see locations of gathering materials. So for example, if, if I have ore here and I want to know where, for example, let's say titanium ore is, it's going to show me the spots where titanium ore is. Yeah, but this is just ore. If I want to look at rocks, right? So this is all the types of rocks that can contain titanium, which is, I think that's hard sandstone. It's also, it's going to show me everything. And you see that it differentiated the colors. So you can still tell which is sandstone and which is titanium. So this is a very nice tool for that. But not only is the map a good place to look up gathering locations and materials, it's also a good place if you want to fish and look up fishing regions. So we click on these fishing regions and it's going to show us all of them. And in case you don't know, in BDO, the type and the price of fish depends on where you are fishing. For example, a very popular spot in BDO is this spot, which is near Heidel storage. You can see that that's Heidel. And if you have ever been to Heidel, you will have definitely seen a lot of people with their fishing rods out in here, right? Not those kinds of fishing rods, although that's possible as well. Now with fishing, we are usually interested in the rare drops and their prices and also potential price drop. So price drops are very special because you need high enough fishing mastery to be able to even catch them. I know that it says like 2%, 1%, 97%, whatever, but you need to keep in mind that just to catch a price fish, it's like a 3% chance base just to catch them and then out of the 3%, it calculates which one of these you get, right? So it's a 97% that whenever the 3% happens, you are getting the Ancient Relic Crystal Shard. And only 2% chance out of those 3% that you are going to get this price fish here. So, although this is not a bad idea to get this, this is like kind of nice as well, but you probably want this, right? So just keep that in mind. And if we look elsewhere, so for example, if we look at this river here, we see that the drops have completely changed and there are no price drops here. So this is probably not, not a good place to fish. Another thing to keep in mind with fishing is that fish, when, when you actually catch them, they act as a trade good. And that means that trade bonuses, like distance bonuses especially, apply to them. So. Although Heidel is very popular, it's probably not the best spot if you just want to like actually make some money even if you know it's AFK fishing, so how much money are you really going to be making? But if you want to min-max fishing, it's probably a good idea to fish in a place that is very remote to the place that you are going to be selling the fish. So for example, I usually sell my fish in Veria or Valencia, right? Is here. So I want to know if I take like an error right, which place is the first away. So it's going to be Grana, right? Kama Silvia. So now I want to look at Kama Silvia and I want to look at like other any like special fishing spots. So maybe this is nice, but there are no price drops. Maybe I want to go here and try to catch a price drop here because I see that there are some. Or maybe I want to go to Odraxia and see that there's like a giant or fish or whatever and maybe i want to catch this even though it's a little bit closer or like you know you can even if you wanted to you could fish in land of the morning light although i have not found any like good spots there but you could do that and then like sell in valencia like you do with uh, crates 
So that's also a possibility, right? I'm just telling you what I do. I usually fish here and then either sell in Velia or if I'm not lazy, I go and sell in Valencia. All right, so you might be thinking, that's nice, like, like you know, cooking, alchemy, processing, gathering, but those are not all the life skills. There are definitely more. And yeah, there are. And this is one of them, which is the trading craze. So if you don't know, you can hire workers and then buy a workshop in the city. And then you put the worker in the workshop and the worker will keep making things. Usually you want them to make crates. So this is, I think this is called Grimpow, GPW. I think that's Grimpow, I'm not sure. But it's his uh, trade credit card calculator. And you cannot really modify this. You need to make a copy, which you just do by clicking file and then making a copy. But if you look at my copy, you can see the profits you will be making on the crates. So I already have this per stack. Stack usually is around a thousand crates. So if you want to put this at a, at a single crate, you can, and you can estimate how much you are going to be making. This will be different based on your crate level, obviously. On the left here, you can put like base ingredients, or if you want to, because you, for these, especially for the timber crates, you need plywood, but you can put timber if you gather them yourselves, or if you buy the timber yourself, or if another worker brings you the timber and then you just process it yourself, you, you can make it like this and it will probably be more money than if I just put plywood here. Maybe not. Maybe it just needs to update. That's the main point of this. You will see how much you make. And you can also, in this uh, spreadsheet, you can also check your own inventory. So this is roughly my own inventory. I have not really updated it in, in a couple of days, maybe a week. And I have not really used it at all. It's just sitting in my Valencia storage. But these are roughly, roughly my crates. And you can see this is how much money I have in those crates after I uh, transport them to Nampo village. You can also check the prices yourself. So this is kind of similar to the videolytics. If you click this, it will include that like you are gathering this yourself. Similar to the trade crates, we also have the hunting calculator also by Grimpow. And this works basically the same way as the gathering, except it's for hunting. Yeah, it just tells you how much money you will be making. It does not include every single hunting spot in the game. It only includes, I think, the most popular ones or the most profitable ones. So I think that there are some, like, especially hunting spots in beginner, let's say, beginner hunting spots. And those are not very profitable because you are going to be making less money there because the base number of items that drop from mobs there is lower than the later spots. And I think there's, like, I think there is like a bird spot in Camasilvia near Ash Forest that's not here either but I don't think that spot is very profitable because it only drops feathers and bird meat and both of those items are not very profitable or like not very expensive on the central market. So yeah, you can use you can use this. I will put links to both of these calculators into the description and you can check this for yourself. Last life scaling focus site is BDO Codex and this is a very nice site if you want to look up recipes and especially if you don't know which recipes a given ingredient turns into. So here, this is the cooking tab. You can also go to alchemy. If you click a single ingredient, so let's say we go to red sauce yeah, and scroll down, we see all the items that you can make out of them. And then we can go even further, you know, let's say red sauce, but I also have a lot of garlic, for example. So I look up garlic here and I see that, okay, I can only make steaks if I have these two items. And this will always help you. And then you can usually use this in conjunction with the videolytics to know which is the most profitable or you just can look up your own central market or apply this to your own need. It also, Video Codex also has the database and this is very nice if you want to know, especially I use this if I want to look for example iron ore and I want to know okay, what types of rocks drop, fro drop iron ore, right? So if I just want to know, I can just type this in and it will all show me. And this is a general database, so you can look up quests, you can look up NPCs, you can look up uh, drops. 
and it will show you everything that you need. One of the most important sites is obviously YouTube and also Twitch. And uh, B Black Desert has a very big Twitch streamer, especially Twitch streamer community, but also a nice uh, YouTuber community. They will usually reply because the community is not that big to be honest, but that's just a plus because it, it is a higher chance of you getting your question answered, especially on Twitch. Like whenever I hopped onto someone else's uh, Twitch stream and I asked them or I just talked to them, they always responded. Or like almost always responded unless they were doing like you know like some pvp or some something they had to focus on but usually like 90 99 percent of the time they responded and what i also appreciate a lot about the video community especially on twitch is that there does not really seem to be that many like cliques or a lot of drama it feels like a lot of the people at least from what i know they either just don't talk to each other, which is fine, you know, or they are friends. So they usually like rate each other, they talk to each other, they visit each other's streams and YouTube. And it's uh, very friendly in this way as well. So I really appreciate that. If we go on Twitch, uh, right now there's just Mr. Endlave and his maintenance stream because it's maintenance right now. Uh, but... <laughs> What Twitch has uh, as a nice bonus, if you like already watching Twitch, is that uh, they have Twitch drops. So they have permanent Twitch drops, and every day if you watch the stream, any given stream that has drops enabled, if you watch it for two hours, you get like a token, and then the, after you have a certain amount of tokens, you can redeem them. I think there is an outfit that you can get from them, and there are like uh, subscriptions for the game. Right? We talked about that in the last video, like the value pack and the stuff. You can get those, and you can also get some other goodies for the game just for watching Twitch, which you might already do. I definitely recommend this as well if you if you like watching in Twitch already. If you don't, that's fine. Just know that the option is there. If you prefer YouTube, you can just watch YouTube. I will also put some other names on the screen when it comes to Twitch streamers and also some YouTube channels that I watch myself and that I would recommend myself. And you can go and watch them yourself. I try to include both EU and NA people and I also try to include not just people who make just guides, you know, so even just entertainers and PvPers, PvEers, just all across the sphere. Alright handsome, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. There are definitely more sites and tools that you can use to make your video journey a little bit easier on yourself, but these are the ones that I use myself the most often, so that's why I included them. With that being said, I bid you all goodbye. Don't forget to tell me about the audio, if it's alright or if it needs some further improvement. I have also tried to do a little bit more editing, so it's not just me looking at websites and have some sort of eye candy to look at. So I hope you like that. And next time, we might just tell you which class you should be playing. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe or whatever they tell us YouTubers to say at the end. And enjoy your grind.